Let's rejoice in the hues and shades of all seasons that glorify us and complete the canvas of life. Each stage of life is an intricate mix of hopes and aspirations, trials and tribulations, beauty and bliss. Let's not forget to thank the Lord Almighty, the benevolent Creator, for this panorama of life. That was indeed a panoramic view of the canvas of life. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give all our performers a loud applause. Teaching is divine, teacher is also making part of the 
divine existence. And we were reminded of the power of prayer in the beginning, at the commencement of this event. We all have been taught by those who have been celebrity wise people, as also from our own humble experience, that nothing can come completely out of our own merit unless our abilities, our gifts, and our experience is given best by the Lord. And education has always been considered a training for life. And we have to enlighten our children that is that education is not merely for a job. It is more than that. Life, as we have just seen, is an art. If life is an art, Every aspect of life is also to be considered an art. Whether it is reading, writing, playing, speaking, whatever it is, it all makes part of this great art. And every person has to be a performing artist. And teachers especially, we often Say, I happen to be a teacher, my most respected and revered friend, at least he also is a teacher, essentially. A teacher turned politician. And we teachers always prefer to say that teaching is a noble profession because the objective gives us respect. But we teachers often conveniently forget that it is equally a responsible profession. If we take teaching as a responsible profession, then every teacher will be performing his duty in a perfect manner. And a good combination, good pulling of the efforts of the parents, the efforts of the teachers, the efforts of the management, the efforts of the society and the government. If such a thing can be possibly happen in our society, I'm sure our country will never have to be worried about the future because we can trust the new generation. I don't want to Speak for long, I will just conclude my speech with an incident which has been published in one of the English magazines, the Reader's Digest, sometime back. It was about something which happened in Calcutta in 1946. A train was coming and getting haunted at a suburban railway station near the Calcutta Metropolis. In those days, trains used to leave again from the platform after three visits. The first visit, the second visit is a morning visit, and by the third visit, the train leaves the platform. And on one fine day, 1946 morning, an ordinary passenger train came and hopped in in one of the suburban stations near Calcutta. And many of the passengers had gone out onto the platform for by tea or by petrol, etc. And one old village woman. The magazine says a hedgeback, physically deformed one who could not stand erect, came to board the train carrying a heavy trunk. 
and she could not get to the lecture. The magazine said she was struggling to get in. And all the passengers in the compartment were silently looking at her. The first whistle came, she was still struggling. And on the second whistle, a boy in his teens, 18 or 19, he was also traveling in the same compartment, gone out onto the platform, put, taking a tea or something, was running back to the compartment on the second whistle. When he came to the door of his compartment, he saw the old village woman struggling hard to get him. The boy took a heavy trunk from her and put it into the compartment. Then he tried to help her by extending his hand, but she could not because of her deformity. Then the, then the second missile, because the second missile has already come, boy knew that at any moment the third missile would come and the train would move. So the boy immediately kneeled down on the platform and asked the lady to put her feet on his shoulders and get to the train. She could not. She was reluctant, she was hesitating to do that. But the boy insisted and a little angry and he told the woman, if you want to go by this train, this is the only way to get onto my shoulder and get into the compartment. The village woman obeyed. The train left the platform. All these have been watched by an English man who was sitting in the compartment. He did not immediately call the boy or congratulate nothing. But once the train left the station, the Englishman called the boy as I and asked him what was his name and what he was doing. The boy said his name was Dilolpa. And he said he was studying in the first degree in one of the colleges in Calcutta. The Englishman did not ask him further. Half an hour the train is Calcutta main station and all this place. After a month, the principal of the college received a letter from the registrar of the University of Oxford conveyed to the principal that this particular boy in the Lundberg was being awarded one of the most prestigious fellowships of the university. The principal could not believe it because the boy was not that much brilliant. He was not even a graduate student. So he, without informing the boy he wrote back to the registrar, I am afraid whether you have made this decision by some mistake because the boy is not even a graduate. Then came the second letter as a reply to this letter of explanation in the register. And in the second letter, the registrar said, narrated this incident, said that the English man who was a witness to all this was the Dean of Science in Oxford. On return he reported to the Court of Governors of the Oxford University and persuaded the syndicate to design this prestigious fellowship to be awarded to the boy. And after that, what is important, I would like to draw your kind attention to the last sentence that the Registrar of Oxford has returned to the Oxford. 
he said, Sir, he said in your letter that the boy is not even a graduate, but the University of Oxford deemed the footprints on the white shirt of that boy on that day as a greater degree ever conferred by any university in the world. I think it is the principle, it is the spirit, it is the lesson we have to teach our children. If we can abide with them, this doubtful, their fellow brothers, sisters, education will have some meaning in the day seven. I wish this great institution all blessings to the Lord. I wish the teachers, the management, the parents and the students of St. Francis School all the best in the day seven. Thank you very much. I would like to present a copy of his book titled The Mother and the Sister, a book on Blessed Mother Teresa and Saint Sister Alfonso. I request the guest of honor, Professor Jagdish Mukhi, to kindly come upon the stage and I request the Vice Envoy to kindly escort the guest of honor. I deem it my great privilege and a blessing that I get the chance to present a special copy of my book, The Mother and the Sister, a book I have written to honor the centenary of the two noble women of our days, Mother Teresa 